Hi there. Good morning, everybody. Well, uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, this is the topic. My why passes, but nothing else does. Uh, let me start asking the audience here in the hall, how many of you have ever faced this annoying situation? Oh, come on. Well, that looks nice, but this is supposed to be an interactive uh, meeting, and I've just been told that you've just been provided by Patinos Makers. So let's try it again and show these people online that you are awakened in the hall. So how many of you have faced this situation? Great. Better than expected, to be honest. So time to blow your noisemakers. And how many of you consider this a game over situation? Not that many, so probably I'm done. Thank you very much. Next year, I'll see you. No. OK, probably most of you, young fellows or attorneys, uh, too shy to blow your phones. But let me tell you that this uh, concern is, does, doesn't affect only to young fellows or young attorneys, because in fact, this is taken from uh, social media, like one month ago, was posted by a well-recognized uh, physician from the States, Kumar Malasari. It was a huge discussion online. Frank Algo also was there. Uh, and you know, of, uh, Lorenz and myself are really active in social media, and I strongly recommend this to you because it permits to have high interaction with key opinion leaders around the world about hot topics. So get involved in social media. So the fact is, when he posted this uh, question, it was really interesting to see that physicians from the United States were really keen on using sophisticated, expensive devices, like atherectomy devices or even laser atherectomy, which uh, actually you need always remember that uh, you need to cross interluminally to use these sort of devices. Whilst, on the other hand, which was really interesting, from the European side, we were more prone to use off-the-shelf devices. And in fact, that was underlined by Keith Pereira, who wondered what, what has happened. In the case, the answer is pretty simple, because at least in Spain, we have low availability of devices and lower budgets compared with the states. So let me share with you a bunch of trips and tricks to deal with this annoying situation using off-the-shelf devices. And the first one, it's pretty obvious, is try to decrease the profile of your balloon. So if you use really low-profile balloon, single mark, this is the thinnest uh, in the market, they are Marek's D, and I'm pretty sure you have already used coronary balloons as well to deal with this annoying situation. So let me show you an example in which we wanted to uh, recanalize uh, the lateral plantar artery going through the pyrenial artery because we have an assessment which uh, we have the thought that we have an anatomical variation through the uh, posterior communicant uh, branch of the pyrenial. As you can see, we were able to go through the uh, posterior communicant with uh, soft wire, support catheter, or footing support catheter. This is a regalia wire from Asahi as well. So we managed to get into the posterior tibia and then crossing up to the lateral plantar. Some disease in the lateral plantar, uh, two by 40 uh, predilation, but as you can see, the balloon was unable to progress, regardless performing the dorsiflexion of the foot, which is a nice bailout maneuver. So we advance our single mark, balloon, low profile, armadic steel, predilation, and this enhances us to use longer and larger balloons. Just to disclose with the audience, I mean, and, uh, this is very, very video. I don't think you usually you inflate, inflate the balloons. So yeah, yeah, this is speed up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, don't do that at home, okay? That's <laughs> okay. And this is the final complexion engine. With nice throw all around uh, even the edge. So, the second trick is to use the telescopic sheet maneuver. And I'm pretty sure that you currently using long sheets to increase support when you're dealing with BDK and DA vessels, uh, 55, 65 centimeters sheet up to the level of the knee. But you can go 
even still further using the new longer sheets, 90 centimeter sheets, up to the level of the anchor. And this will provide you with huge support at the tip of the second sheet. So it's increasing the pushability of your devices. So this is an example which will have a severely disease with the vessels with these chunks of calcium at the level of the ankle. So we cross with our wire, proceed to the artery, we advance a support catheter. As you can see, these chunks of calcium really annoying. I'm, I'm sure if you face them, you, you can remember that sort of impression. Look at the calcium of the artery. We were not able to cross even performing the do uh, foot dorsiflexion. So we decided to perform a bailout, inflating a balloon to steer the wire, and then we cross with the wire, but the balloon was unable to progress Listen, again. Okay. How many people here? Can you pause the video, please? Would, would, would I switch to a O3-5 approach? Can you show, can you show the, the, the slide again? Because I, you know, ah, this is a video. Uh, yeah. Okay. So how many people would have switched to a different wire? So how many people say, okay, I mean, I can't pass the balloon. For example, this is a typical bailout situation. You have to exchange the sheets. You already crossed with an O14 wire. So we need to also to face this problem like, okay, you have a far, full French sheet. And then you want to, uh, to upsize, but you already have the O14 wire through. So what do you do? So how many people would have chosen a different, uh, different uh, uh, approach, for example, to this? Current, can you have the mic? Uh, I think it's wait, 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 wait for a second, because I mean, uh, people online need to hear. Thank you. Fantastic case, um, Conrad from London. Hello, IR. Um, I think uh, if I was in this position, um, I would probably end up dissecting out the back of the PT and ruining the artery, and then think, oh, I'm now going to come round the front, around the pedal loop, and try backwards, and then fail again, um, and then leave a mess, unfortunately. So uh, I, I, I like this, and I'm going to try that. And I might try the Phoenix down there. Sensible it's a bit far. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 the, it's, American, uh, it's American cousin. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it's nice also to understand, you know, in this kind of, in this kind of uh, uh, lesion. Okay, you have an O14 wire through. I don't know if it, you're going to be in the other slides. But then, what do you do? You need to exchange the sheet. What do you do? I need to change the sheet up to... I mean, let's say you have a four... Because you started with a four French sheet. Do you st I mean, usually, for example, how many people do start below the knee intervention with a four French sheet? How many with a five? How many with a six? Okay, <laughs> wise guys, okay, so, okay, so okay, very good. So you know okay, good, 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 so I, I think it's interesting to discuss this thing. Well, the thing, if I, if I had a four French, I would use a four French catheter to use a second or a third wire. Exactly, so that, that, that's the important thing. For people like me, who are probably dumb, they use a four French sheet in order to try then to press on the, on the groin. What you can do, you can use a four French catheter up to the popliteal. I can in, you can insert like one or two wires more, of course a bit costly, but you know, you can insert up to three or 14 wires. And through the 14 wires, you can exchange the sheath like on an ordinary five wire. Or use a spatter core. Or exactly, a yeah. So I think it's very important to know that, because I mean, once you cross the lesion and you say, would I cross it again? God knows, you want mm -hmm. to exchange the sheath, put more wires and put a bigger sheath down. Okay, thank you, okay. So, we'll sorry for interrupting, but this is the, <laughs> this is the format, guys. That's fine. It should be very, very, uh, very elastic. Could just go ahead with the video uh, again. Okay, just to fresh up, we were uh, stuck in the situation in which the wire has crossed through the lesion. We struggled to cross the lesion. Uh, I'm going to remind you the trick again, just to open the balloon, and this will center the tip of your wire. If you, at this stage, it's difficult to steer your wire, but you can center the tip of the wire and change the direction with the balloon, and then bending the, the ankle as well. So this was a trick to cross through uh, the lesion. And then, regardless having crossed the lesion, we were not able to cross with our 2 by 40 balloon, so at this stage, we decided to pre-delay the whole track of the posterior tibial artery, two by five, three point approximately. We progress our thin wall, uh, long shift, it is a hollow one from BD, up to the level of the calcaneal area, and have a look to the balloon, go nicely squeeze into the lesion through the calcium. So once you get achieved the balloon progression, you can check it out that you are interluminally, and then pre-deletion, balloon deletion of the proximal aspect of the lateral plantar, mid aspect, and even a 2.5 balloon, and this is the complexion angel. This is a highly effective 
uh, maneuver uh, and not really technically demanding. So the third. Too much blood. Sorry. Too much blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the third one comes from the surgical field. Uh, and by the way, do we have any surgeon in the hall today? Not many. <laughs> well, I must confess I'm a vascular surgeon. So there's still some room for surgeons. So this comes from a classical maneuver from the surgery field. For those who are not surgeons, I'm going to explain it. Whenever we want to stitch an anastomosis in the tissue and you, you need to face a heavily calcified plaque, the needle cannot penetrate the calcium. So what we do is to uh, get a mosquito clamp and crack the, clamp, the plaque, and then this enhances the penetration of the needle inside the plaque. Does it make sense, right? So this was uh, basically adopted by this guy from Singapore, Stephen Kuhn. He's a vascular surgeon. He's the inventor of the lymph flow device. And what he basically does is just to perform a small cut down and using the landmark of the arterial calcification just cracks the plaque. Wow. How, how many people can, can Between surgeons. I must say this is really impressive, even for myself. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, at that stage, you know, probably like the other tricks, you know, probably it's a bit invasive. Let's yeah, say. well, the thing is, for those who are not surgeons and feel this too massive, mm -hmm. I would say that uh, luckily our colleagues from Japan have refined uh, the technique, uh, and I'm going to show you this, but I think it's, this is a very good moment to pay tribute to our Japanese colleagues because this gentleman, and you can change, join me with a, a respectful bone, have developed the most amazing bailouts to sort out these annoying situations. And they really deserve that. So the first one comes from Shiheo Chihasi. This is the Pierce technique. Well, what Shiheo does is using a 21 or 18 gauge needle, pierce the plaque percutaneously to crack the plaque and to enhance balloon dilation. It will be sort of an IVL, an off-the-shelf IVL, low-cost IVL. So this is a case from my friend, Patronis. He was wanted to cross through an uh, anterior tibial artery. As you can see, he was using a single mark balloon, low profile, was unable to cross. Then, as you can see, he struggled to cross. He uh, took his needle, pierced the plaque, and as you can see, sometimes it's really difficult to pierce the vessel because the calcified tends to refuse to be uh, uh, pierced, the, the vessel. But in this case, you can use our uh, uh, maneuver, which could, what we call the body wire uh, needle maneuver, which is to give support to the vessel with a second uh, needle or even with two needles, what we call the chopsticks maneuver, okay? So he was uh, able to pierce the, the vessel, and as you can see, the balloon nicely advanced. Chunk of calcium, balloon dilation, amazing outcome. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, like in, my, in that case, I said, okay, let's take a natural view. It's amazing your case. <laughs> said, well, where's the calcium has gone? No one knows. No one knows. But actually, it was nice to know that the patient did fine. I don't know if you put also the, the image of the foot, but it, the patient did very fine. And actually, how I found out, it was in a Congress like that. I was in this, uh, in this room, and the, the guys showed me, I say, ah, oh, it should never happen to me, you know, to use this technique. Believe me, two weeks later, after this Congress, I got in this, in, and the, I think there was no other way. I mean, apart from using probably an attractive device in order to, to try to cross. I mean, I don't think there's a, and actually, actually, I'm not shy about my complications, and no one is here. Uh, it, happens, it happened to me to have a little bleeding once in a, in a, in a posterior tibial artery. So I think this technique is very, very, uh, very nice, especially if you have a superficial vessel that you can then compress and stuff. If you do like very deep, like I did other times, you can run into complications. So it's important to know that also. <laughs> Okay, but you can even go a uh, little bit farther. This is the inner pierce technique. This was described by Tetsuya Nakama, friend of us from Japan. And what uh, Tetsuya uh, does is, uh, this is the case again, a heavily calcified vessel. He was struggling to cross with the wire. He was able to cross, but by the time he wanted to progress the balloon, he got it stuck in the calcium. So what they do is just to perform a retrograde axis of the posterior tibial 
and then perform a rendezvous uh, from uh, the proximal aspect. And once you have your through and through wire, uses a 21 wash needle to drill uh, through the wire, you need a stiff wire, and to create some room uh, through the calcium. It's a sort of uh, off-the-shelf atherectomy low-cost device. So once he uh, had performed the piece, the inner piece, the balloon was nicely advanced, balloon dilation, and this is the final outcome. And here comes one of my favorite ones. This is the Balfour technique. And it's my favorite because it just uses a simple torque device. So this is a case in which we have an occlusion of the anterior tibial uh, reconstitution at the level of the DP artery. So initially we went through with the, our offering wire, the wire advanced quite nicely, downwards, up to the level of the DP. And as you can see, the tip of the wire was mostly moving quite freely, which uh, means that we were there voluminously. So we performed our usual balloon drive pre dilation but at some stage we got stuck even using the ultra low profile balloon. So we rapidly switched to a retrograde axis of the B DP artery, DP puncho. So we progress our wire, progress a support catheter, and then perform the rendezvous inside the support catheter, externalize the anterograde wire, and then tight the torque device at the end of the balloon, we went into advance, and from the distal axis, pulling the wire and the balloon as a whole is a, sort, a sort of ice breaker ship. And as you can see, this is effective because it advances as a whole. So we perform a balloon dilation balloon dilation of the PDA, DP, and this is uh, the final outcome, nice flow, the anterior tibial, DP, and the arch. And last but not least, you can also reverse the bulk form technique. So this is a case in which we had already performed a bidirectional recanalization of the anterior tibial, but there was a remaining stenosis at the distal DP. We were not able to progress anterogately, so we decided to go to a retrograde puncture of a digital artery. We progress our wire retrogradely up to the level of the uh, western catheter, which was on the anterior tibial. Perform the rendezvous in a standard fashion manner. And then we didn't want to enlarge the hole or just using the balloon from distally. So we put the torque device as a poor catheter and pulling from above. We gain enough room at the level of the stenosis. And then in an anterograde fashion, we progress the balloon, balloon dilation of the DP. And then we cross with a body wire in order to gain access to the digital artery to achieve hemostasis with a 1.5 balloon, with a low profile balloon. And this is the final outcome. Okay, so take home messages. Never ever give up because failure in this sort of patients is not an option. But choose appropriate evasive. Increase the strength, be sensible, increase the strength of your maneuvers step by step. Don't go straight forward for the super top maneuvers. This, uh, uh, effective, safe, and should be considered in specific clinical conditions, but always keep in mind to be sensible and extremely gentle because they are, real, they are really fancy, but they can become a complete disaster in case of failure. And now, last chance to make some noise. How many of you are still considering this a no, a game over situation? No one is even getting close uh, to the little noisemaker. <laughs> Come on, guys, last chance. Show how many of you are still considering this a game over situation. Wow, complete success. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Thank you so much. No, stay, 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 stay. Thank you so much. So I think it's, uh, it was very entertaining. And actually, I think, you know, after having shown all this, all this uh, fantastic case, so just can you share with us one or two complications which can happen during this kind of thing? Because, I mean, who never does, you know, never has complications. Who does has complications. So can you sh tell us about some possible, you know, downsides of these techniques? Yeah, I would say, probably, if you are not uh, in, uh, have huge experience or experience by performing bidirectional approach, I would say you go through, it should be uh, the telescopic one, or lowering the profile of the balloon, because you cannot start doing uh, bad form or that sort of stuff or inner piece if you have just performed one retrograde puncture. That's, that's pretty obvious. The se second thing is, as Lorenzo has mentioned, the first time you want to pierce uh, an artery, you feel scared, definitely. You feel, oof, I'm going to crash it, I'm going to crack it. Don't start with the thinnest one. You can do pierce technique in the SFA. Whenever you want to, uh, you have a plaque and you, are, you don't have, a th we have Michael here, a thorectomy devices here available. You can just pierce the plaque, try to crack it if you don't have, you just gain experience on the tactile feedback of the artery when you pierce it. So this, uh, the, try to uh, uh, create a step by step uh, all of these sort of movements. Be gentle, don't use, uh, a man. you don't want to stop the artery, you, you should be gentle, be sensible. And if you're thinking about the bad form technique, uh, my best advice is just to use short uh, balloons. If, because if you use longer balloons, you will end up uh, uh, peeling them up. Uh, they, they, they tend just to uh, the, the get a uh, pile and then you can get into trouble. So if you use uh, short balloons, it's gonna be better. I, I use the Armada one because it's stiffer and then you should pull, I never had any issue with it. Okay. And also, I would like to hear also from people, so atherectomy users. Uh, do you always use atherectomy or do you use other tricks? So Eric, you know, uh, my, uh, Michael, you know. What, what do you use? Do you use a Phoenix, for example? If I can, but the um, just my experience of bad form when I first tried it, I did exactly that. I invaginated the balloon and then it snapped off in the DP. And luckily, we had surgical colleagues who could remove mm -hmm. it. It was a bit embarrassing. Was it over yeah. the wire? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah. and it the invaginated wire. and the proximal marker popped off. Which and then the balloon? the balloon, yeah, it was um, a bantam. <coughs> so, yeah, this is this is what we had on the shelf. Sorry, and now, and I'd only do it with a coyote or sterling. And short. Thank you for a great presentation. Mm -hmm. Eric, yeah. what do you do in this case? So a couple things I do. The first thing I do is the, the, my first technique is to wedge the balloon, and, and we do something called grenadoplasty. So we'll rupture the balloon in the proximal cap, and then try to advance the new balloon through it. So that's usually my first approach. Then I switch up my wire, and usually I use rotational atherectomy, like rotor blader, or occasionally orbital, usually rotational and laser if it's my backup plan. So, but all those techniques are awesome. I think a uh, great alternative. Yeah, great presentation, August. Thank, thank you for that, as usual, great. Um, uh, maybe a little bit water in the wine. Um, I think we have two jobs. Make it open, and you showed it perfectly, Lorenzo. You showed it, you showed it. But what about keep it open? Yeah. And I'm not sure if, if the balloon angioplasty with, with the last step is that what really makes it open for a long time. And I think we should also discuss about that, and that for I think what you said, uh, atherectomy is probably a very good tool in these, uh, in these situations, circumstances to give a stable lumen, no recoil, no dissection. So we should not uh, avoid atherectomy, as you said, in all no, 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 circumstances. No, 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 no. To really maintain the lumen. Definitely, you're right. I think, time. but you need to cross. So sometimes yeah. even the atherectomy device is too bulky to cross. So I think both concepts are not uncom incompatible. Uh, you cross and then you can perform your vessel prep. Uh, we are on the side of vessel prep because the, the final comes will have to do a lot of with the vessel prep. And another to me, I, I think it's, it's a good answer. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, it's enough. Is there anything on, from uh, online people? Because we're also running a little bit out of time. Thank you so much, Alice, again. Thanks also to Daniel.